Hey guys, I'm Mark with The Oval RC. Today I'll be doing a review on the GNSS Performance Analyzer. I wanna thank the people at Sky RC for sending me this. I couldn't wait to get it, I wanna test it on my drag car. But today we're gonna to be testing on the Traxxas Spartan. And on the box it says it's a 50 plus mile an hour boat. We're gonna test that with this little GPS module right here. So this is what the package looks like. It's in a nice blister pack. We can see the GPS module right here through the blister pack and on the back, you can see the booklet and also the USB cable. Open it up. You do want to open up the booklet, read through it. It does have a lot of good information and tells you how to use your new performance analyzer. Next, you will need to charge the unit. You'll do that using the USB cable. Plug this right into the performance analyzer and plug this end here into a charging block. And it takes about three hours to charge. When you're charging, you will see a blinking light. And when it's fully charged, it'll go to a solid white light. So right away, you will notice that there is no on off switch. There's no way to turn this unit on. So you will need to go to the app store and you wanna look up SkyRC GNSS PA and download that app on your smartphone. Right after you open up the app, you will notice the power light will come on and the light above the Bluetooth will come on, letting you know you're connected to the performance analyzer. After a few seconds, you will see a green light above the satellite icon. If you look on your smartphone, right now I'm connected to about 12 satellites. So we have the green light, right install it on the boat. I'll be mounting this inside the boat underneath the plastic. It will read through clear plastic or any types of plastic. It will not read through any metal. So make sure you have no metal above your performance analyzer or else it won't be able to pick up the satellites. I would assume it's not waterproof, so I am putting it in a Ziploc bag because there is a chance the boat can flip over and the unit can get wet. I'm gonna duct tape it fast underneath the cockpit cover here. Now you're not supposed to seal off the bag. It's not supposed to be in any type of sealed container because it does read barometric pressure. I am gonna leave my bag cracked open just a little bit. We're gonna taper fasten here so that way it can't fall out. Just like that, and I'm install it on top of the boat. With the app, you have three different options. You have drag, track, and flying. We're not using a plane. We don't need to measure altitude, so we won't use that one. If you're using drag, the unit does have to sit still. With the wind blowing today, I'm afraid it may not be able to use that, but we will try it. So we use track, and we'll measure top speed and average speed. Then we'll put the boat in the water, we'll hit start on the app, and once it gets past about 30 feet, it'll no longer pick up on your smartphone, although it will still continue to record on the unit. The first test I'll be doing, I'll be using two 2S LiPo batteries. I don't expect to hit 50 mile an hour on this run, but we'll see how fast the boat will go. Okay, we're ready to start recording data on the performance analyzer. We'll just click on the GNSS PA app. That turns on the analyzer. We're connected through Bluetooth. We have 12 satellites. The battery voltage on the analyzer is at 78%. We have a choice between drag, track, and flying. We'll click on track. We just want to record top speed. And when we're ready, we'll just go ahead and click start. And then when you're done, you'll hit stop and then hit read and you'll be able to see your data. If you can't see your data, like right now, it's very bright outside here at the lake. So we'll go up here to settings and you can always go to records, and you can read your data later when you're back in the shop. Back. Okay, so we're ready to start recording data, and we'll hit start.
after your boat gets back into Bluetooth range, you can click on read and we can see we went 1,234 feet. The average speed was 16 mile an hour and the top speed was 35 mile an hour with two 2S LiPos. Now we'll do a test with the two 3S LiPo batteries and see if we can hit 50 plus mile an hour as advertised on the Traxxas box. Okay, we're going to start reading. Going about half, three quarter throttle. Not quite wide open. Try to open it up. Just a little bit, do it again. Just a quick burst. Try one more time. Okay, Let's see what we got. Checking the data from this run, we can see the distance was 2,910 feet. Time was two minutes and 53 seconds. The average speed was 11 mile an hour. Top speed was 50 mile an hour. Let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more speed out of it. Okay, we are recording. See if we can hit our speed run this time. Going for 50 mile an hour. So we had a little bit of a mishap on the second speed run. A little bit of wind, a little bit of ripples caught the boat. It flipped up in the air. The boat went underneath the water. The nose was sticking up in the air. I had to go out and rescue the boat. The performance analyzer held up great in this bag here. It did get some moisture to it, but it's still working great. But the Traxxas Spartan speedboat did hit its mark with a top speed of 52 mile an hour. And if we check the data right before the boat crashed, we can see the boat went 2,306 feet, recorded for one minute and 18 seconds. The average speed was 19 mile an hour, and we recorded a speed of 52 mile an hour, definitely proving that this boat will go 50 plus mile an hour as advertised on the box. Okay, so I'm back in the studio, and this is the part of the video where I give my personal opinion, review of the Sky RC. GNSS performance analyzer and guys it did what it's supposed to do we wanted to see if the boat would go 50 plus mile an hour as advertised on the box and it did and we found that out by using the performance analyzer during the video the boat went up in the air it flipped around took a nose dive into the water went underneath the water stayed there for a little bit the analyzer did get some moisture on it, it got a little wet even though it was in a plastic bag even after getting wet it works fine Although I do not think it is waterproof, so I wouldn't put this or submerge this underneath the water. I like the size of the analyzer. It's a perfect size. It'll fit on almost any RC vehicle that I have to do tests with. And the charging cord worked perfect. Charge it up for three hours, and you should get about six hours of use on a fully charged battery. The directions were very simple to read. When I downloaded the app, I could follow through in the directions. And it was easy to move through the different modes and figure out which mode I wanted to use to test the boat. We weren't flying, so we didn't have a drone or an airplane. We'll be doing that in a later video, but we weren't doing that this time, so no need for that mode. Uh, we used the track mode, and I thought it worked really good for the test we were doing. 
The drag mode I will be doing in a later video. I'll be using the associated DR10 drag car where I'll be changing gears and batteries and stuff like that. And working with the app a little bit more than what I did this time. Uh, the track mode worked great for the boat because I wanted to see top speed. Uh, I wanted to see a little how far the boat was going in distance too. So we've seen distance, average speed, and top speed, and it seemed very accurate. I really liked how that worked. What I don't like about the analyzer, it does not have an on-off switch, so you can't turn it on if I don't have my phone or if my phone battery dies. So if I'm out somewhere racing my RC car and my phone battery is dead, I'm going to be stuck. I'm not going to be able to use my performance analyzer unless I use somebody else's phone. So I wish it did have an on-off switch. It does not have that. And if you're going to have an on-off switch, you might be able to... You should have something to switch between the different modes. I would like to see that. But other than that, I'll have to keep my phone charged up. And it was very easy to use. And I really liked how this worked. So for the price, if you're looking to see if your car is making a performance change or not, improving, I think this is a really good tool to have and an expensive tool to have, and that's why SkyRC made this that way. Number one, you can see if your car really is that fast or if the changes you are making are working. So I, I do like this performance analyzer, guys. Get that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be using this in more of my videos, so stay tuned. This isn't a complete review, but you will see more down the road. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget, join the Facebook group. That's the Oval RC. We'll see you next time.